Uh, Brian Von Bergen. I am an executive director at Wells Fargo Bank. I work in strategy consultants. So um, coming out of high school, you have a lot of choices for, for what schools you want to attend if you're able to do that. And uh, my family wasn't necessarily able to afford college, so I attended school on a football scholarship. So I attended um, Slippery Rock University in Pennsylvania, and I graduated from the University of Akron, uh, my undergrad. Uh, but why I chose that school was a strong mix between the academics in a business school and the athletics of, of participating on a, with a football team. Prior to going, going into college, you're, you're pressed with so many uh, ideas and so many thoughts about what you want to do, whether you want to go into a field that is medicine and you have to deal with blood and guts, or whether it is finance and you want to deal with numbers and really be very analytical about things, or whether it is something that you're really endeared about helping people in a certain particular way. And so you have to kind of find yourself in that. And where I found myself was, A, I love sports. B, I love the data behind sports. And it turns out I have a really good intuition with numbers and finance and things like that. And so that that's kind of what led me into that. I also, as you can see, I also like to talk and I also like to argue. So I was thinking maybe law school, being a lawyer was something that was really interesting to me. And so I kind of was going down this dual path of being finance and law was where really where I landed. But I really was a self in, uh, self inspection, like reflect on what do I think would be happy to do in 25 or 30 years from graduating college. You know, people don't like to think that long, but you want to say, what can I really find my passion in? It, it has matured from maybe when I was coming through through uh, high school into college. And so our interns in job shadowing were really having those conversations. Hey, I would love to understand more what you do. And really kind of just, it is a shadow, but it was mostly asking questions and saying, okay, this is what it looks like when I'm sitting in a financial institution on a regular basis. Or this is what it looks like when I'm in a courtroom as a lawyer and what do I have to do? Or having those questions. And it's really trying to be inquisitive and trying to figure that out. So I, I didn't have any specific interns or uh, job shadows, but I asked a lot of questions and got a lot of insight from others that were very open to the, having those conversations. So in the world I'm at as an executive director with Wells, we deal with strategy and change management. So I have a high level overview of what the bank does in general. And so we usually get at least one or two interns in our group on an annual basis. In fact, we have some interns in our space right now. And the, one of the best feedbacks that we ever get from those interns was, I had no idea what was involved in a bank. And I'm just picking on that because it's my level of expertise. And there are so many different nuances and, and fundamental pieces in a bank. The first thing that when the people think of banks, they think of the branches, which is great because it's the it's the hallmark for that particular like company. But those that came in the interns said, I had no idea you had a full-time communications team, or I had no idea you had full-time lawyers. And so they start to see these other pieces of the bank that, that could be interesting to them, but it's not that traditional finance perspective. It's like, wow, there's 250,000 people that work at Wells Fargo, there are a lot of different entities that they could get into. So I feel like those types of opportunities for you to not be focused on a task as an intern, but to understand the experience of a corporation or understand the experience of the work that they're doing is critical. So I got into, as, as I was progressing through college, I had a great professor my senior year who was a finance professor, but he was also a, like a daytime, he was a, a stockbroker. So he was in the finance aspect of that. And I really started to kind of not he was mentoring me and just kind of giving me some sense of what I wanted to do. And I said, here's what I'm good at. Here's what I like. Here's what makes sense. And he goes, I think you should investigate going into either stock brokering and being in the markets and or being a part of the bank. And so I took him up on that. And my first year or two was actually working in, with a Wall Street firm, um, selling stocks, working with people to build their portfolios. And then I started to realize all the other opportunities, the same thing I, that others have experienced in the interns now. I started to experience all these other spaces where we could help and support clients. So I was really a sales focused person throughout the first third of my career to this, to this point. And then I started to position in more of a maturity like, wow, I could do other things with this bank and, or with a bank and, and kind of working through, um, hey, I can actually help the, the salespeople that are actually doing the sales with the, with the clients. I can help them, provide them subject matter expertise, provide them levels of information that would help them give the customer 
customer a better product or whatever that might be. And so I continued to broaden my experience by asking people about their roles, being genuinely curious about roles, and trying to figure out what matched my skill set. Um, because I live in Charlotte, so I have had multiple experiences with other banks in, in Charlotte. So I also worked at Bank of America and work at Wells Fargo, very similar entities. But most importantly, it's because they recognize good talent and they recognize people that want to help them change. Some of the banks have had growing pains over the course of the last five to 10 years since there was a, a financial crisis in 2008 and 2009. So I p pivoted my career to say, hey, I think we could do certain things better. And here's how that looks and here's what it looks like. And as part of change management and really crafting that strategy, I wanted to work with a company like Wells Fargo that says, hey, we recognize we've got some challenges. We want some leaders who will come in and help us change the, the dynamic and, the, and the, the work that we're doing as a company. I have no regrets in the way my career has evolved, but really looking at ups and downs, it is saying hey, um, trial and error. Well, I like doing that. How can I do more of this? Or this was not for me and I don't want to do that. Or getting in a situation similar to the financial crisis of 2009 and saying, wow, I'm going to have to make something different here in what I do. And so it's that constant introspection. It's constantly looking at what it is that I want to do and how can I pivot that and make that work into other, other ways. And it's really saying, identifying my strengths, identifying my weaknesses and really focusing on the strengths that I have and being honest with myself. Myself. What I have found in doing the hiring that I'm doing with the bank is that there is a fear of asking questions, a fear of being vulnerable and saying, I don't know that. And there is too much expectation on our seniors or prospective seniors or just rising high schoolers that they have to know everything and have everything figured out. And so I would say my number one recommendation would be be vulnerable ask questions and seek to understand. Be curious. It may be something that's ridiculous, but don't be unwilling to ask a parent of another, of a, of a peer, of another student, what they do and how they do it. People will always be willing to answer questions about themselves. You'd be shocked if you're genuinely willing to ask somebody, what do you do? Do you like it? Those are great questions to get a good conversation started because then you can say, I don't want to do that. And that's perfectly fair. But what I want you to say is, okay, I've eliminated A, B, and C. This is something that might be more interesting. And then ask Brian and say, hey, Brian, you mentioned you work at Wells Fargo and you do X, Y, and Z. Would you be interested in, or would you be willing to talk more about that? Or how can I learn more about that? Those questions are great to ask when they come from a point of genuine curiosity. Yeah, I mentioned I don't have any regrets. Um, I think I've always pursued what was important to me, what I enjoyed doing the most, and what I was most passionate about. So I think those are the things that I, I look forward to. I wouldn't look back and say, oh, I wish I could have done something different because I can't control it. It's really just understanding what I've done. And if I did make a mistake, I'm actually trying to adjust when I adapt. I'm a fast learner. I really feel like the, the way to kind of move forward is say, okay, self-reflect. What did I do wrong? How did I get better at it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I'm a little more mature in my career and what I've done. Uh, I feel very stable in what we're doing. My aspirations are to affect change within the organization I work for. I want to I want to be able to see things through on the micro and macro level, which means maybe I'm having data people execute certain certain code for us to build or I'm changing the way the bank does certain processes in the bank to improve their process so I want to see those um, through and mature and some of those projects are five to seven year windows and so I want to see that through as part of the extension of my career and I want to maintain a work-life balance that really says I, I value my work but I also valued my family it's be open it's okay if you take a misstep don't let the mistakes define you. Be vulnerable and be curious.